Hey there, hockey fans. Welcome into another matchup preview. Pat Strong joined by the voice himself, Rhett McGibbon. Mm. And Rhett, this weekend the Flames were able to take on IUP Crimson Hawks. And boy, in game one and game two, offense was the name of the game as the Flames really came out on fire. Yeah, the forward units this year for the Flames are dynamic, dominant. They're heavy. They've all got great shots. They like to cycle a little bit here and there as well. It's not all just a, a finesse style of play. They've got a really talented and uh, lethal mix up front, which has been a lot of fun to watch. And this is without Gammer in the lineup yeah, too. This really is a guy yeah. that was one of the, the top young guns in the league just a few years back, a, a fantastic year last year, another big body. So you have to think when Gammer gets back into the fold, you've got Ryan Cox in there and you, whether you're third line or fourth line center spot, the forwards, oh, they are so deep. Yeah, the forwards really have been pretty deep for this team. And one forward who's been lighting the lamp really well for the Flames has been number 83, Josh Frick. Yeah. And Monica Garland got to talk to him after game one. So, Josh, obviously you've had a dominating start to the season. Two back-to-back -back hat tricks. That is very impressive. What's allowed you to come out so strong this year? Um, obviously just my line mates playing with Quinn again. Um, we got good chemistry. And then uh, Artie as well, he came in, complimented us both very well. And honestly, it's, it's just been... Uh, it's felt good, and uh, the boys are just, they're feeding me, and the pucks are going in, so happy about that. And then the chemistry of the team as a whole, you guys just seem to really be on the same page this year. You know, it always takes a little bit of time to get in a group, but you guys are just all on the same page. Talk about the team chemistry this year. Um, ever since the start of the year, we've had the same line so far. We haven't switched much up. And that helped a lot. We had a lot of practice time going into the season. So, I mean, everyone's just kind of gelling together, and everyone seems to get along pretty well, so it's, it's fun. And yeah, we're at as Monica was just talking with Josh Fricks. I mean, the Flames Forge unit has really been something pretty special yeah. here at home. And it really paved the way into game two, but not just being offensively dynamic, but defensively as they got their first shutout of the year. Yeah, Tyler Myers had a quality game. Didn't see a lot of rubber, but he still made the stops when he had to. And the, I really, like you talked about, defensively dynamic. I really like the Flames D this year. And a big part of it is, I always think, that if you don't notice a defender, he's doing his job well. Yeah. Colin Baird, you know, he scored a goal, you noticed him there, but not defensively, have you really noticed him? No, because he's playing solid, he's making quality decisions, he's getting the puck out and doing a good job. Dimitro Kobolanski, this is another guy that uh, just is doing his job. And he doesn't have to be flashy, he makes simple quality plays. And I really like him. Garrett Nelson has gone to another level so yeah, far at really the beginning has. of the season. Power play machine is skating extremely well uh, in fantastic shape. And he looks like he is in for just a, a breakout year, perhaps an All-American year, if he can kind of keep up this rate of play. So the, the D is looking solid. The forwards are, are looking great. And I think another big thing, too, is Josh Fricks did not score a goal on the Saturday or Friday night game, the midnight game. He didn't score a goal, and you still pummel them. That's big for this group. Yeah, I think if what he was able to do, though, is just playmaking showed, able to get a couple apples in that game. And the guy who was the big man on that team this past weekend was Artie Lakaitis, and Ava Bratz actually got to talk to him after the midnight game. Lakaitis, you've had a great start to your own career as a flame. What do you see on the ice that best represents that? I mean, I think uh, we're playing as a team, trying to be together, communicate, playing for each other. It's yeah, that's the only way to succeed, I think, as a team. As an individual, I, I don't know, trying to shoot packs, use the speed, something, yeah. And your offense is very strong. What do you think contributes to that as well? Just playing smart, simple, and together with the partners. That's pretty much it, yeah. Keep it simple. And as you travel to Alabama, how are you preparing for that? Uh, getting a lot of food, rest, get some movies. For the road, yeah, that's it. And Rhett, we turn our attention now to the Flames heading down south to play Alabama. Yeah. It's been quite some time since the Flames have traveled there to play in their own barn. And last time they did, Flames had some trouble. So talk a little bit about that matchup between the Tide and the Flames. Yeah, it's uh, the difficulty level now goes up one notch and you go down to Alabama, like you said. And this is a, a good opportunity in multiple ways. You get away from the LIC, you, the guys get to hang out a little bit more. You're always on your first road trip, you have some bonding experience, which is a lot of fun. But for some reason, Alabama always cranks up their rate of play when they play the Flames. And Taylor, Taylor uh, Joseph loves to play Liberty, and he's one of their top line centers, a, a guy that just produces. And they've done a quality job of recruiting down there. Alabama is bringing in hockey hockey players. We saw Pierre Wallette. He was a guy that used to be down there, and now he's in the ECHL. Yeah. So they have talented guys playing on that team. And on any given night, 
Alabama can burn you. I think overall Liberty on paper is a, a more talented team, has more depth, but take nothing away from Alabama. They've always been coached well. They seem to rise their level of play when they need to, and we've seen it in midnight games and in, in other games against the Flames. They come ready to play LU. Well, the first real test for the Flames begins this weekend as they take on the Alabama Frozen Tide. Make sure to check out social media where the Flames will be updating there, and then they'll come back in two weeks here to take on the Cuse. But in the meantime, as we said, make sure to follow the Flames on social media. Make sure to follow this guy and all the Game On crew and everything that they're doing there because they post a lot about hockey every now and then, you yeah. know, when they're not yeah. talking about football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Pat Strong, and this is Red McGibbon.